So as you may or may not be aware, the Security Plus exam is going undergoing some major changes, some huge changes in the next couple months in November. The exam will be switching over to a new version, SY0701. I'm going to talk to you about some of those changes and what leads to those changes, why CompTIA is changing the exam right now, and what you can expect with the new exam. If you have any questions or you're interested in learning about this, I recommend checking the link in the description or watching our video here and reading our blog post on these changes. We talk about all the changes, about when they're launched, and everything as goes through. You can also download the exam voucher here, uh, or not the exam voucher, the exam objectives here for each of the certifications. So if you're studying for your 601 now, it's the perfect time to take your test. The exam will be switching over to the new version November 1st of 2023. So you have a couple months left to finish up and take your 601 exam. The exam is gonna be changing over to a new version with brand new objectives, brand new uh, organization and structure. And I'm gonna to talk to you about all those changes right now. The current version of the exam has been out for about three years now started November 12th, 2020. And every three years, CompTIA likes to change and modify their exams, update them to a new version to keep abreast with current technology, current trends. This is usually a good thing, but what normally happens with, especially the Security Plus, is that the exam gets harder and harder. We saw the same thing from the 401 to the 501. From the 501 to 601 was a significant jump in difficulty. And now we can expect the same with the 601 to the 701. With every version that I've seen, it's been an increased focus on performance-based questions, on the technical questions, less on the multiple choice questions, and the difficulty of the questions has increased significantly. CompT is trying to do this to increase the prestige of their certification to make sure that their certification is premier and accepted by hiring managers across the cybersecurity industry. So let's talk about some of the changes now between the 601 and the 701. So I have both exams, and you can download these at cybercrafttrain.com. These are the exam objectives, and they're pretty different between 601 and 701. So if we take a look, the general test structure is gonna be the same. We see that the exam details or test details is the same with a maximum of 90 questions over an hour and a half. Multiple choice and performance-based questions, same recommended experience. You have a passing score listed here in the 601, not listed with the 701. I think that kind of plays into the, the changes that CompT is making to some of their exams. So it might not just be as straightforward as a straight passing score anymore. Now you can see the domains are significantly different. We have what used to be uh, a split of 24%, 21, 25, 16, and 14. Now we have a split 12, 22, 18, 28, and 20 with an increased focus on security operations. Operations used to only comprise about 16% of the exam. Now that really has been increased. The names of the domains are different. And in fact, the content is very very different in itself. Uh, we used to start with attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities, and we talk about the architecture of the network, of the how to how to incorporate those or how to protect against those threats, and then how to implement different security tools like SEM devices, firewalls, etc., to ensure that you have a defensive environment. Now, what we're doing is we're talking about general security concepts. Then we start talking about the threats, which I think is a good change. Uh, starting right off the bat with threats. If you follow the exam objectives, it was sometimes a little difficult for students to, to grasp. So starting with general security concepts, I think, is a positive change. Then we talk about the threats, the vulnerabilities, and mitigations, which is essentially the same as domain one. Domain one has just been shifted to domain two. And you can see the weight is basically the same, 24% to 22%. Then we go into security architecture which is basically architecture and design. So that has been shifted now to domain three. And instead of having implementation and then operations and incident response, we kind of have a combined security operations domain, which comprises about 
uh, over a quarter of the exam, 28%. So these two domains have kind of been combined. And then what we have is governance, risk, and compliance is now essentially security program management and oversight that includes GRC, governance, risk, and compliance, and then some additional topics. So let's take a look at each of the exam objectives and I'll explain how each of them have changed. So, you know, threats, attacks, vulnerabilities has changed, shifted to that domain two. Now we have this new concept, this new, uh, new category, general security concepts here, which are good. We talk about the security trolls right off the bat, which I thought was a really good way of doing it. We talk about the CIA triad, uh, AAA, zero trust, physical security, Physical security, front-loading that, I think that more belongs in operations, but it works here. Um, and then we talk about change management, the change management process. That's, I think, a good change. Some key cryptographic tools or cryptographic solutions that you'll come up, that will pop up multiple times throughout the course, like PKI, encryption. I think these are all really good changes to the exam, in my opinion. Then we go down to what used to be domain one is now domain two threats attacks or threats vulnerabilities and mitigations used to be threats attacks and vulnerabilities and we see we used to start with social engineering now we're starting with different threat actors different types of attackers which i think is good then we have attack vectors and attack surfaces the ways attackers can choose to uh, attack your organization kind of lines up with with uh, used to be 1.2, 2.2. We have vulnerabilities. I think that's a good change. We used to do application attacks, signs or indicators of malicious activities, and the purpose of mitigation techniques. So we have application attacks, malware attacks, physical attacks, network attacks. These used to be separate subdomains, network attacks and application attacks used to be separate subdomains. Now what they are, they're all wrapped up within 2.4. So pretty different, you know, we used to have multiple subdomains. Now we only have five subdomains for, when I say subdomain, I'm talking about like 2.4, 2.5. We have five subdomains for uh, all of the, the threats and vulnerabilities domain. So a different organizational change, we used to have eight of these. Now we only have five, but still you see a lot of the same concepts just reorganized, okay? so. Then we get into security architecture, which is essentially architecture and design. We have security implications of different architecture models. So we talk about models up first, including cloud. Okay, so cloud and the way an organization chooses to organize their network, whether it's a hybrid cloud, a traditional architecture, or a fully cloud-based environment, that's front-loaded, which makes sense with the reliance on cloud right now, but we do talk about some things like uh, Internet of Things and ICS and SCADA systems, which are, I think, a little more specialized. They don't really need to be front-loaded, in my, my consideration. We do talk about general concepts, especially pertaining to cloud security, like availability and resilience. And then we talk about how to design the infrastructure, how to create or implement 802.1x, for example, how to set up some devices. So this kind of plays into what used to be implementation. Uh, so it's a little different. It's a mix of implementation and what used to be domain two architecture and design. Okay, but then we go into uh, strategies to protect data, data security. There used to be application and then data. We have resiliency, uh, recovery methods, site availability, clustering, warm, hot, cold sites, backups. And that's pretty much it. We have four subdomains here. So far less subdomains. The exam objectives are a little less descriptive. You have, there's more concepts that are being taught in the exam that aren't listed entirely on the exam objective. So they normally would list out, or at least they used to list out every single objective that you would see on the exam. Now it's a little more implied. You see how we used to have eight subdomains just in domain two. Then we get into security operations. Okay. This used to be domain, uh, basically domain four. So implementation, we say 
has been kind of wrapped up into that domain too. So I'm going to go down to operations incident response. So now we're back to kind of marrying these up a little bit better. Here we talk about baselines, how to harden, talk about mobile device management, bring your own device, corporately owned, et cetera. Wi-Fi security, application security, how to protect hardware and software, how to protect those throughout the life cycle, delete data or sanitize data when you're done. It's organized much differently than it used to, as you can see just by how these exam objectives don't really measure up real well. Talk about vulnerability scanning, different ways of measuring vulnerabilities like the common vulnerability scoring system, CVE numbers, and then alerts and alert tools like SEM devices. So a lot of the things that you saw, what used to be in domains two and three are now kind of shifted over to domain four. So it's a significant change, okay? We still talked about SEM in the old operations domain, but you see how this operations domain has now expanded significantly used to be four subdomains, and now we have nine subdomains here. GRC is now Security Program Management and Oversight. A lot of these are very similar. They're just shifted around in which subdomains and which order they presented, which I think makes sense. We talk about different policies, which are very good. The regulatory requirements that drive compliance. Risk management concepts, we see that it's pretty much the same as we used to. Third-party risk assessments, doing vendor assessments, supply chain assessments, vendor renders, MOUs, uh, MOAs, etc. And then we talk about security compliance, privacy compliance, uh, auditing, and then risk assessments as well. So pretty much a matchup with how it used to be. And then the rest, we have an acronym list, very similar. The, you'll notice that some of the old technologies like 3DES is no longer taught, which I think makes sense. A lot of these older deprecated uh, protocols and technologies that we used to study on the 601 exam just to know that they were deprecated have been removed. So there's more focus on emerging technologies, more focus on AI. Uh, a lot of these protocols are a little more relevant to today's world, which is great. Now, when you have an update like this, you're going to get be focusing on what's being used right now. Hopefully that remains relevant for the next three years. But again, these are my thoughts on the exam. I think overall the changes are in a positive direction. I think the way and the order in which the exam topics are being taught is positive. I think the difficulty is going to be much higher. There's more emerging technologies being tested on the exam. There's a focus on more of the practical applications. I can expect to see more performance-based questions being focused on in the exam, less just general knowledge, multiple choice. So the importance of working with labs and using hands-on tools is still there. So I definitely recommend if you're doing for your Security Plus, your 701, definitely get those lab, to get that lab environment from CompTIA. But I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. If there's anything I missed that you noticed, you know, let me know. Be happy to talk with you about it. And you know, if you're interested in getting Security Plus training, check the links in the description. We have live self-paced classes. We're a CompTIA authorized partner. We use the official CompTIA Learn Labs environment. So if you're trying to finish up your 601 before the deadline, check us out. If you're interested in getting your 701, we already have 701 uh, classes scheduled on the calendar. But I hope this is helpful. Thanks so much for joining in. And thanks for learning about the changes between the 601 and the 701 version of the test. It's a pretty major change, and we can expect to see, uh, I think, a lot of good things coming out of this 701 version. But I appreciate you joining in. Thanks again. Have a great day.